is a Bramble Jam podcast. Hi, I'm Bran, and I think I'm over here loving Lifetime Christmas movies. I'm Dan, and I think I'm over here despising Lifetime Christmas movies. <laughs> I'm Alonzo, and I'm totally open to the idea of Lifetime <laughs> Christmas movies, and this is, is the, the Deck, Deck the, the Hallmark, Hallmark Podcast. podcast. It is this yeah. podcast. Like, Hi. The, I'm, I, I'm serious. The composer of Smurfs. <laughs> they did that theme for us. <laughs> or like trolls. Yeah, or yeah. trolls. Yeah. yeah. Boy, haven't done the trolls. Justin with, Timberlake? I yeah. Anna Kendrick anything? and Justin Timberlake yeah. did it for us. So. That's what happened. <laughs> okay, yeah. Be jealous. Yeah, we did it. Yeah. Um, it's another Monday, which mm-hmm. means classic non-Hallmark channel Christmas movie. Classics. Other networks. We've been to Netflix. We've been to ABC Family. We have done a Lifetime. Uh, we did it up TV. We're going to do a 50 year old movie for Alonzo's birthday. Wow. It's a true story. Ooh, man, um, I'm so happy. And, and Dan, you'll be shocked because it's almost like a real movie. What? Get out of here. Serious. Uh, yeah. We'll see. I don't want to oversell it. Okay. But, you know. All right. Fair enough. But that's not interested. In not interested. Yeah. We, <laughs> saved it, we saved it in May for sweeps. That's what we saved it yeah, for. There you go. <laughs> mm. uh, Alonzo, how are you today? You doing well? I am good. I'm good. I'm just getting through these last weeks before I feel comfortable entering the world again. So, That's right. Um, you know, it's a lot of list making of places I'd like to go maybe, but then also sort of a, a tiny little bit of panic of like, you know what? It's been real cozy to just not leave my apartment for 14 months and <laughs> it's going to be a, something of an abrupt shift. So I'm hoping to take it in, in, months. in little stages, little oh increments, gosh. you know, before I, before I jump back into the deep end. Uh, yeah. Is uh, Greenville, South Carolina on that list Come of on, places man. you're uh, you're playing uh, lo- long term, long term yeah, for sure. Right. It's always it's always been a bucket list item of mine. So yeah, and you Greenville got, is everyone's. Bucket you got list brothers item. that live in Atlanta. The least you could do is hop up two hours up the road for us. Oh uh, sure, it's yeah. right right around the corner. Alonzo, this is not the the space, but I we already recorded a film and a movie. I want to hear about what you think about the arc the arc like dome be, be closing down. Woo. Um, well, you know, it's if it actually happens, it would be a terrible thing for for Los Angeles. It's a you know the the not just the 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 dome and the arc lab, but also the the theaters of the Grove, like the whole Pacific Theater chain, is saying now they're going to close. But uh, my good friend Mark Edward Hoyk, who really you know worked at the New Art for a long time, really understands the the nitty gritty of distribution more than I do. Says, look, they are playing chicken. The theater chains are basically saying, we're not going to pay you the back rent that we owe you for the last, you know, year and a half. Yeah. So fine. Here's the keys. You guys do something yeah. with it. Find a and way to make gonna, it monetizable. Yeah, exactly. And so I think for the landlords, it's going to be easier to either like make a deal with Pacific or make a deal with some other chain to come in and run it rather than like tear down these buildings. I don't even know if they can tear down the dome. I think that's been protected. Um, but I, I imagine that mo- most, if not all of these theaters will reopen under some auspices or other in the near future. The unfortunate thing would be if Santa was on the lease yeah. of, of the dome. Because then it's just yeah. a... If they lost you gotta, that... you got to find that paperwork and then forget it. Man, Santa's yeah. dome away from dome. You, know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you said it, pal. You said it. Feel good about it. Feel Man, good about it on a Monday. I'm very excited to talk about snow then Christmas. People have been asking us to do this one, and we interviewed Andrew Walker... Yes before the first season of Deck to Hallmark, and he it was this whole thing where he was like, hey, I'm going to be in a Lifetime movie this year, and we gave him a hard time. Then obviously we never watched the movie, and then people have said, you know, and it's got, you know, Bethany Joy Lenz as well, so seems like a no-brainer. Andrew said that this is his favorite movie he's ever done. Wow. Wow. So. Man, no pressure. Andrew no pressure. put it on. We'll see if it lives up to the Andrew Walker hype, won't we, boys? Um, we are talking about Stone and Christmas. Uh, it originally aired on December 16th, 2017. 2017. <laughs> what else? Like this. <laughs> Jenna and Kevin are both writers for Epiphany Magazine. The Epiphany Magazine. The Epiphany wow. Magazine. Their boss has paired them to work together on a big project that is going to come out, be released on Christmas Day. It's the Aspen Project. Oh, you know the, the Aspen, Aspen Project. Project. Oh we all gosh. know it. 
Um, they both have to write a piece about Aspen. Whoever writes the story that gets the most clicks, the most online buzz, will be awarded the MVW, the most valuable writer. Now, Jenna, stakes are high. Uh, stakes are very high here. Uh, Jenna's boss asks her, hey, how are you doing with the holidays and being newly single? And Jenna's like, I'm good. I just want to work. You go, girl. Um, so they're both going to be going to Aspen together, and they're going to be spending plenty of time together, so you better get used to it, kiddos. They bicker a lot on the airplane, and they feel like they have each other all figured out. Um, so they're, they're side by side on the plane, and due to a blizzard, they have to land in Santa Claus, Indiana. With nowhere to go, they bump into Santa and Mrs. Claus-looking couple named Carol and Chris. <laughs> they own an inn in town and invite them to come and stay with them because uh, they got some, some, some rooms available. They arrive at the Winter's Inn, and it is all decked out for Christmas. It's awesome. It's amazing. And Kevin's not really feeling it. Uh, the next morning, they find out that they will be in the winter's end uh, at least for the next few days because uh, they, there's no no way out of the out of Santa Claus, Indiana. They also find out that it's winter uh, winter's end last Christmas because it's being bought up to the by the bad guys. It was a historical site, but the town said that since the person who founded the inn is fictional, it's not a historical site. Yeah, the inn was founded by Santa, what? so that'll do it. Uh, when the boss finds out that they're in Santa Claus, Indiana, she's like, there there has to be a story here. It's Christmas time. Find the story. So they spend time looking for their own stories, um, but they also end up spending a lot of time together, seeing as how they're both here at the inn. And she learned that Kevin isn't always a jerk, and he learns that Jenna is really fun to be around. And one night, they both can't sleep. They end up baking cookies, thank God. Um, and we find out that when she was a kid, she was put up for adoption, but no one ever adopted her, so she's never had Christmas with a family. Holy smokes. Um, and uh, we also find out that she was looking forward to having her first family Christmas, but then her boyfriend broke up with her. Gosh. Ooh. So... So that's sad. Um, and uh, he talks about how, um, uh, you know, he loved Christmas growing up, um, but he doesn't, like, really get into the nitty-gritty of it. Um, they go for a walk at 2 a.m., and they talk about how much they admire each other's work. And the next day, he's like, hey, I want to take you for a drive. And on the way, he's like, I want to tell you about my family. My dad passed away three years ago. I have not been back home since. Um, and so I want you to come with me. Keep me company. Because they're just right up the road here in Indiana. So they have a fantastic day with the family. And on the way back, he's like, hey, I'd love for you to come with me on Christmas morning. But uh-oh, she's asleep already. Carry the conversation, Kev. Come on. Uh, when they get back, uh, they get into a real sassy slash sexy fight, I'd yeah, say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and they get close to kissing in the midst of the fight, but no dice. They'll make up for it later, though, boys. Don't worry. <laughs> the next day, she's poking around in the basement, and she finds a picture of Chris and Carol, but it's from 1842. But they look exactly the same. So she takes it to Kevin, and Kevin's like, uh, this doesn't make any sense. And she's like, well, what if Chris was actually Santa Claus? And Kevin's like, I can't believe you said that out loud. Uh, we get a look at Kevin's article, and it's basically him saying he's falling in love with somebody. Uh, so that's an article for the ages. Uh, it's time for some big Christmas Eve party, and they're both looking all sorts of snazzy and outfits provided by Chris and Carol. We'll get into it. They slow dance, and suddenly her ex-boyfriend walks in. He's like, hey, can I cut in? And Kevin's like, yeah, I guess so. I mean, what do you say? Um, and so they start dancing, and he's like, I've really missed you, and I know I messed up, but I'm ready to take that next step. I want you to come home for Christmas with me. Um, and she's like, oh, gosh. And he's like, I'm here to rescue you from this weird tiny inn. Not necessarily wrong, but just read the room. Um, and so she leaves reluctantly and tells Kevin that she's excited to read his article. Uh, it's midnight, and we see both of them looking outside the window, him at the inn, her in this weird hotel, and uh, they see a gold streak come across the sky. But when the boyfriend looks, he doesn't see it. He doesn't get it. 
Kevin then looks in the jacket pocket and he sees a certificate proving that the end was started when they said it was started by Santa. The certificate is there. And it's at that point in time that I yell, it's in the jacket. And the mail lady walks in and looks at me very weirdly. <laughs> I'm sorry, mail lady. I was very excited by this. Kevin then combines the articles, send them, sends them on this way. It gets posted. Jenna reads the story, and she's like, oh, my gosh, this is crazy. This is amazing. It's Christmas morning, and he's with his family. They hear the doorbell ring, and he opens it up, and she's like, I love you, too. And they kiss real big ones, real big ones. and uh, he gives her a stocking that belonged to his dad. Now it also belongs to her. They play Christmas charades, and that, my friends, was Snowed in, in Christmas. Christmas. Yes, we did it. Woo! Yes, we did. Woo! Yeah. Yeah, sometimes I I get excited and sometimes I yell and I get yeah, very excited. You're taking my all the feels here, uh, which had nothing to do with the movie. We can just tell it okay, now. Okay. She, uh, Sheila, God bless you, Sheila, sent us a care package with all of our favorite She's very excited. It. Um, it doesn't fit in our mailbox here at the office. And so we're watching this movie and the mail lady, she is allowed to just come in our door and put the packages down. We let her do that. Uh, that's no problem. But it happened when Andrew Walker is pulling this thing out of the jacket and Bran is going nuts. He's like, it's in the jacket. It's in the jacket. And she is standing at the door just looking at us. And I look back and I was like, thank, thank you. And she was like, I want to work with y'all. Y'all seem fun. <laughs> she and then, had one hand on the dog spray. That's yeah. right. That's exactly right. It was, uh, it was just like, hi. It was quite a treat, man. Yeah. I'm so happy it happened. I'm really happy am. it happened too. Hey, let's take a quick break. We'll come back. We will get to some more feels and some way it was and all that good stuff here on Deck the Hallmark. <clears throat> That was uh, that was an ad for a throat clearing magazine. Um, uh, that's what that was. <laughs> yeah, it's good though. It's good. It's, it's a good, good ad. It's a good ad. I don't know what you want, guys. We're talking Snowden Christmas 2017 Lifetime. Andrew Walker, Bethany Joy Lens. Let's talk about it. Let's start with the hot take, and I'm going to start with my good friend Alonzo. Alonzo, what did you think about this movie? Don't you dare hold back. <sighs> no bars held. Um, I'm inclined to agree with Andrew Walker. This probably is his best Christmas movie that I've seen. Uh, and I think I've seen all of them. Um, you know, this is charming. And the two of them are super good at doing this exact kind of movie. And, you know, we talk about the, the this is a, the reindeer fly kind of movie. Like they <laughs> allow right. for like there's Santa and there's magic and there's all the stuff that Hallmark has sort of shied away from in recent years, but it works if you do it right. And I think this movie does it pretty well. Um, yeah. Just, you know, adorable central couple and, you know, yeah, the, uh, we'll, we'll have wait what's and whatnot, but I'd say uh, this, this, you know, does what it says on the box. I love it. I love it so much. <laughs> it's it's everything. It's everything that I want. And um I just I just absolutely love um Andrew and Bethany together. I just think it works every time. And uh the Christmas and the the way that they were able to bicker back and forth and talk over each other and all that stuff was just really working for me. Um, I, I love it. And I think, I, you know, Andrew, Dan and I were talking about this as we were watching the movie, but Andrew, he's always, you know, I'm never upset to see Andrew, but there are certain people that he works with that you can just tell it's just at that little extra something special. Uh, and he gets that with Bethany and he gets that with Nikki. And this, it just, he was just at another level in this movie than where he, you know, is on uh, some other homework movies with, you know, uh, just some other yeah. actors that are great. And they're, I'm never upset that it's happening, but these movies like uh, with, with Nikki and Bethany are just at another level. Um, he just works so well with them and the chemistry is there. Bethany Joy Lenz is just always fantastic. Um, and so seeing these two work together, I, I, I just, I, I loved it. And the Christmas was just Matt. It, it was everything. It was everything is it what I'm trying everything. to say. It was everything. So with a few tweaks, this movie could be a good horror movie. Um, <laughs> uh, and, and, and not just an okay horror movie, like a really good horror movie. Um, it's not, you don't have to go a long way when they're already, uh, tailoring suits for people they don't know, but, uh, there also is quite a bit of like Christmas magic, like a whole boatload of Christmas magic. And there's a bevy of wait, what's. Having said all of that, it's a thumbs up from Dan. Yeah! 
it's a, it, it's a like from Dan. And we are yeah. we are two lifetime movies and two likes for me. And I don't know what's <laughs> going on, but this movie works if you like like I don't know if I would ever watch this movie again. I, I don't think I would choose to necessarily. But if this is your thing, like if Christmas movies on TV are your thing, I don't know how you can do better than this. Like I think Love at the Christmas Table aspires to be an actual film um, and sometimes to its detriment. But because of that, it's it's really a special movie. This movie, it just is wheelhouse. If you, it's the beef, if yeah. you love these movies and you've not seen this one, you need to see it immediately. I've said Bethany Joy Lenz is the best at this. I stand by that 100%. She's remarkable in this movie. Andrew Walker is great. They get to bicker. They get to fight. They get to be funny. Um, I don't know if that's a lifetime thing, and Hallmark just didn't, is just like slow to catch up with that. Um, it's really good. It has feels, so much Christmas, so much dumb magic, wait, what stuff. But 100% worked for me. We, we didn't get one of these all holiday season. We, we didn't get, like, Delivered by Christmas. Do you my, think, do you think like, like, did Hallmark pass on this movie, uh, like, because of the magic? Like, in 2017, they were trying to move away from any sort Man, of magic. and I just don't get it. Because, like you said, Alonzo, if you do it right, you, it, you can do it. And this movie does it right. I, I, like, it just is a no-brainer to me. I just don't know how, this, it, how it happened. I don't know how, <laughs> how this movie ended up on lifetime like we, how did we've how did never watched one in season that's as good as this so in the th in 18 19 20 those 120 movies that we've watched n none of those are as good as this movie i i'm still gonna plan the two fly. turtle doves two, two yeah. turtle doves yeah, yeah, yeah. that's fair <laughs> but no you're you're right and 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 believe me there are a plenty of lifetime howlers yeah. like you're getting the cream of the crop here so don't yeah we watched their suddenly, two best movies yeah, yeah exactly. don't leap this podcast yeah. to deck the lifetime because yeah. you'll be disappointed <laughs> yes yeah uh but no you're right this is the, the it, it, as people always said people who like this sort of thing will like this sort of thing this is how you do one of these movies and you pretty much like hit all the the buttons that you're trying to hit yeah it, it it really is i mean it, it was a good it's good it's for for a tv christmas movie yeah. this is yeah. everything you could possibly want and those two leads man they are great together they really are great together you know what i also think is really interesting this is a gary yates film and and andrew does a good a bit, lot of gary yates movies and i right. just i think they work well together i yeah. think i think like you know, he's mentioned how much he likes working with Gary and how he kind of brings out yeah. something from him. Nikki and so does I think, too. Yeah. yeah. So I think there's something to that as well. I also think Gary, who makes a lot of these movies, I think it, this shows you, like, not that his movies on Hallmark are bad, he's a pro, but you give him a little bit more wiggle room on Lifetime, and I feel like it, it behooves him to continue making Lifetime movies because this was. His movies are always competent. You know what I mean? Like any movie that we see with it, Sweet Autumn, like the movie you guys loved, like he directed that one. He's directed so many of these with Nikki and Andrew. But this one... 12 dates over the yeah. last holiday season. Holy was cow. Yeah. I mean, he it's just great. It really is. It's If you're going to sit down for 84 minutes and watch a Christmas movie, make it this one. I really want to know the the Stephanie Moraz connection, the the woman who plays Andrew's sister in this movie. Yeah. yeah. Because she is also in with Andrew, Marion Bright. <laughs> um she was also in A Dream of Christmas. Wow. Like she's she's been in a handful of these and there are she, Christmas in Tennessee, another one of his lifetime ones. Like she keeps popping up in his movies, and I'm wondering if he's huh. like, get me her, or they're all directed by you. I don't know what the connection there is. Are they all kind of Dream of Christmas? Is that a Gary Yates? joint that wouldn't surprise me yeah. that's a out there type of out movie. there but it's also nikki and andrew yeah so you know who knows uh hang on i can tell you you it, can it tell me Yates. it's a gary yeah there you go that checks out for yeah. sure yeah Bam. um gary um <laughs> let's get to all the feels part of the show we talk about what in this movie gave us feels panda i mean uh alonzo <laughs> I can't it's believe second shot, i can't believe we got this far <laughs> that's true we got this it, far. Yeah, it has been a yeah. lot of me going to Panda first, so yeah. I'm, I, yeah. yeah, I, I should be given an award you know and also we, slapped at the same this time. Is a little, this is a little deck to Hallmark trivia. We used to not go to Panda first, uh, sure, but then sometimes he wouldn't have anything. <laughs> yeah, right. So like, if we went out of order, I used to float around. I yeah. used to jump. So and like, if I did my two weight what's, and then we only had two, and then you did two weight what's. Sometimes <laughs> he was over there, kind of, and it was funny for us, but it wasn't as good a, a podcast, and so we just, you know, we skipped the middleman there. 
I also love him being first because we get to change his mind. Yes. Yeah, I was going to say, he is swayable. Oh, yeah, movie, for sure. You know. It's big fun. No, that, this reminds me of the time that my mother went through all three of my brother's <laughs> names and then the dog's name before getting mine. <laughs> there, there it is. Oh, That's right. There for sure. Classic. Story of, story of my sorry, life. Alfonso, anyway, sorry, Alfonso. It's you. Alfonso, you go ahead, pal. <laughs> okay, Fran McNasty. Uh, <laughs> hey, do you remember that time that uh, Bill Abbott called you Alfonso? <laughs> oh, vividly. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> and we just all enjoyed it. Fran McNasty is so great. Great. Yeah. That's, a, that's great. That's, that's what I really have on the back of my jersey. Yeah. Fran McNasty. Living, living for it. Right. Uh, one of the better baking scenes I've ever seen in one of these mm -hmm. movies, I have to say. Uh, here's the thing. The, the two of them are so charming together that they make the matching PJs bit work. Oh. Yeah, I don't and know. And they're not even they're they're not even particularly warm pajamas. Like they look kind of summer weight yeah. for you know yeah. Indiana and December. Yeah. But they like it's it's like um, I remember when uh, there's that scene in Pretty Woman where where Julia Roberts has the brown dress with the white polka dots, and a friend of mine said that's the kind of dress that looks good only on Julia Roberts. Right. And unfortunately, <laughs> other people are going to buy it thinking that that's what's going to make them look like. I you know. The, the, the matching PJs bit, hard to hard to sell, I think, but those two do it. Um, you know, uh, the the all is lost, what they, you know, what the, what the pros call that moment in the movie where it seems like the couple is broken up and they're not going to get back together. Always a tough hill to climb because you, they, they can't, it can't be so terrible that like you, you, you know, someone's done something unforgivable. Uh, very often it's like, oh, I overheard something and it turns out I thought that y'all were back together, but you know, like there's some nonsense thing. This one actually gives you a decent one that makes sense that actually does pull them apart. And you think that there's a reason for that. And so like that, that's a, that's a, a just a plot element that I've seen mishandled so many times in this movies that I got feels from the fact that they were doing it right. Uh, and yeah, at the end they kiss big ones. Big yes, ones, man. no doubt about it. I, I was writing notes and Dan was like, they, they're still kissing. They're still kissing. They're, still, they're still going. <laughs> you see, you keep writing. Um, I agree about the cookies. I, I was thinking while they were making those cookies, it actually looks like they made the cookies. Yeah. Like the cookies yeah. that came out of the oven looked like the ones that they, you know, made during uh, when they were when they were making them and they've had the M&Ms in the exact same spot. So it was uh, I was interested uh, and if they, I don't know why they would spend the time to actually bake those cookies, but they did. Um, and I, 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 the biggest one for me, uh, I don't know, you know, what it is about sign language in Christmas movies, but it always <laughs> works. Um, and it worked uh, double time because we find out that Andrew knows sign language because of his grandfather. And when him and uh, and uh, Bethany Joy Lynch, uh go to his house for the first time, his sister, now Dan had to explain this to me because I don't know a lick of sign language, but his sister basically t tells her that I, I, or tells him I like her and he does like a me too sign. Um, and so that like the fact that they're the, him and his sister are communicating with sign language, which they know because of their grandfather and it's all coming back worked for me. I love that. Well, sign language usually gets an eye roll for me because it's not used as a, hey, this is a language. Like This is a foreign language, just like anything else you would learn if you only speak English. Instead, it's used as a gambit to win a girl's heart or to get in touch with Santa. <laughs> and that bothers me. But then to see them do that at around the dinner table, 100% yeah. made it more palatable for me uh but th th it had a purpose that's right that's right the feels in this movie, before they were just before that they were just ripping off the remake of miracle on that's right Street. yes it was it, it was just a pure like oh this is you know classic another one where you know andrew walker gives the girl the uh, the, the kid in the airport yeah like they keep playing on this thing she thinks he's terrible and he's not um the fee if you're not the what bethany joy lens does in the last scene where she shows up at the door and tears up and says i love you too it's it is one of my favorite love declarations in in uh, that I've ever seen in this doing this podcast. It's perfect. It doesn't. It's not overdone. There's not a big speech. She read the article. He knows she read the article. Tear one tear. I love you too. It's perfect. It it is it is it's it's the feels that we all wanted. And they kiss big ones. And they kiss big ones. And we got it. Very rarely does you know the kiss is coming. Very rarely does the declaration and kiss live up to what we've seen before. And it does. They absolutely nail it. Wonderful. Yeah, that, that, that's the easy one, but it is mine. There are others, but that, that, is, that one in the sign language at the dinner table. I, think I, I did laugh at the, the big one, Kiss, though, because, you know, they got to 
reposition for the camera also yeah. like obviously yeah but in reposition they also give his whole family just a front row seat yeah. into that big old kiss That's which right. is just uncomfortable right, i feel yeah. like it's just yeah. like but they, but but they sell that moment because again i think when we talked about this with with snow globe like you have these relationships that don't mean anything at the end because we've barely seen the two people on screen together whereas this film actually gives them the real estate to get to know each other and understand each other and build a relationship so when they are when they do say they love each other you buy it because you've seen it happen yep yeah from i mean they're on camera together from minute two essentially yeah most of the movie yeah it helps when they know each other beforehand I've, i've said that like about these movies like when they do it seems to you know they put put a foundation there that we don't have to try to figure out in 84 minutes which is great Mm. Let's take one more break. We'll come back. Wait, what? What the hallmarks? Love it. Alonzo is here, everybody. <laughs> we'll be right back here at Deck the Hallmark. Welcome back to hey. Deck the Hallmark. Very excited to be talking about this movie with my friends today. And I'm very excited for the Wait, What part of the show where we talk about what in this movie made us go Wait, wait what? what? And I'm going to start with Alonzo. Alonzo? Wait, what? And to be clear, I'm not insulted when you call me Panda. <laughs> you shouldn't be. I, I, I adore him. So just I want to be very clear about that. Uh, Panda's okay, angry. So He's watching live. He's angry. <laughs> I know. Just, yeah. I, I don't want to don't don't poke that bear. Um, Panda's like, you should be so lucky. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, you know, in the way that you guys see movies about schools and teaching and whatnot and, and are extra annoyed at what they get wrong, <laughs> that's me in magazines. Yeah, uh, I was a magazine editor for like six years, not an editor, editor, but like I was an arts editor at a magazine for six years. And so I know enough to know when these <laughs> movies are going completely off the bean. So yeah, our, our, our publication is suffering financially. So we're sending two of you to Aspen. That was my first one. I, I wrote down, <laughs> these are tough times in journalism, which is why I'm sending two of you to Aspen. <laughs> right. They meant to basically, and, and only, you know, two enter the Thunderdome and only one can leave. You yeah. know, this is, this is like Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. Yeah. Second, second prize is a set of steak knives. Third prize is you're fired. That's you right. Know. Um, the art of being a good journalist is finding the extraordinary in the ordinary. I don't Mm. know that that's true. No, (laughs) I I think you made that up. Um, that sounds like, (laughs) I think maybe that's the, that's the art of being a good Pinterest person or something, but I don't know that it's necessarily the art of being a good journalist. These saltine crackers are amazing. (laughs) That's a good journalist right there. There you go. Uh, A1, uh, you get you get to keep your job. Uh, Bethany Joy Lenz, uh, a hardworking researcher that she is, research pro. She's always talking about how like she does yeah. the research. She uses Bing. Yeah, come on. It's a Microsoft. This movie is sponsored heavily by Microsoft. She has she, a Microsoft she's phone. She's a Windows phone yeah. in the movie. Oh, brother. Which was Did a hard... Does she have a Zoom too? <laughs> I think it was after the Zoom, but she has a Windows brand computer, a Windows uh. brand phone, and Bing, they they were not messing around with this thing. Clearly not. Yikes. Bing. Um, Yeesh. The, their whole sort of mid movie conflict about like, what's your article? What's your article? <laughs> is kind of nonsense, and I'm glad we got over that really quickly because it was just you know what. Um, she goes up to the attic to look for this certificate, and there are more Christmas decorations sitting up there right. <laughs> that haven't already been Where? put out. <laughs> I'm like. <laughs> This house already has like every square inch is festooned. Surely they would have found room for these other four Santas that you're well, like. What over. happened to them? Like, I don't what, know if you know this. But no, put those there, in the app. They've okay. been there 175 <laughs> years. Fair enough. But you know what? Maybe they're also hoarders. I don't know. Like, if you're not going to put them out, then throw them away. I don't know. Um, the uh, the the Dan mentioned this being a horror movie. I will say every time she finds the vintage, scary old oh. daguerreotype <laughs> photos of the two of them, I kept waiting for her to find like the 1920 New Year's Eve party at the Overlook Hotel. Yeah, yeah, with yeah maybe Jack I, Nicholson in front. You yeah, know, yeah. Like, that was all. That was that was total nightmare. Her me. seeing the pictures in the attic made me want to send this to like Scott Derrickson for Sinister Three. Like that's what <laughs> made me want to do. Like, bro, like this is it. This is the one you've been missing. This is the, the Christmas know, version. That's right. Christmas Christmas sinister. That's what I need in my life for sure. Uh, and then finally, just the articles sound terrible. Like, oh, you yeah. know, as, the, as they all as they always do in these movies. Oh, like, so you bad. know, the idea that I'm going to save my career by writing an article about how I learned to love Christmas again because I fell in love. Oh. Like, no one, no career and, and saved. Also, 
Yeah. <laughs> Plus the idea that like a lifestyle magazine is going to send reporters out right before Christmas to write a big article it's going to post on Christmas Day. That's not how any of this works. No, no, no. Like no, no. no one is reading anything on the internet on Christmas Day. And if they are, it's canned stuff that they planned weeks ago because everybody went home. So, yeah. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, that's yeah. all I got. I, I just want to uh, piggyback on the whole, like, they don't have any money, but they're spending two, sending two people out to Aspen. I also just was confused as to, like, what the stakes are. <laughs> like, so if you write the one with the most clicks, you get, it's not a promotion. It's just, it's just you're the most valuable you're the writer. You're the best. B- you, most bestest. You, get a, you get a big old thumbs up from <laughs> me. Right. You get an add a and if, boy, and, if you, girl. and the second best you just get to keep doing what you're doing <laughs> we will fire other people though but you two are both very much safe i was just confused by that whole thing um, at one point he says i'm writing for my job he yeah. says he's yeah, writing I for th- his i thought job. i thought second place means adios which I, would be dumb because she says they're his be- her best two writers but at one point he does say he does say that. i'm writing for trying to save my job and he holds up this pad like he's you know He's in the spotlight. Like he's holding up this like, pet. like <laughs> I don't like he, it doesn't make any sense to me. But does the boss ever say that the second, I, I because like I like whoever gets the most is the most valuable writer. That's all she says in that scene. Yeah. I, but it's intimated that the other one doesn't have a job, I guess. It's bold. It's bold. It's bold. I got a bunch of crappy writers, but you two are the best. One of you, get yeah. out of here. See ya. <laughs> I just want to point out that complimentary PJs are incredibly tricky. Yeah. They're very, the, it, yeah. it is not like a robe yeah. where you can tie it to fit. No. These are, people are coming in all shapes and sizes, and, and you free, go with the, t- uh, thank God they're both, you know, are, smalls. The three PJs in the drawer is what he says. Do you think it's a drawer full of PJs? I, 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 and you just pick your size out of there? I'd they, love that. They got extra small to, to quad X and you just go. It, just I mean, they it is sa- it, it is Santa, so magic. Yeah. Like it's just never it's just always Maybe he knows their he size the s- from the list. He does know their size. Yeah. We know that yeah, later. He made, yeah. he made the suit fit, so yeah. yeah. We'll get there. Um <laughs> Andrew is reading his article that he just finished, and he's reading it out loud. And at the end, I believe he says the end. He does say the end. And I, he does. <laughs> uh, the, and I fell in love and it was awesome. The end. <laughs> <laughs> it made me laugh. Yeah. Um, and I just, you know, this, the sister here uh, call is, calls up Andrew and they're talking and her husband is asleep on her lap. Oh, man. Which is, which is fine. You know, maybe they're watching something and he falls asleep. She could could not care less about that though. She could not be talking louder if she tries. No. That, that poor guy just wanted a little nap and she is just yelling at her brother. And I just felt so like it, I, I would just I, I would I I would feel so bad even taking a call if my wife was asleep on the couch next to me. Like, but she just we just went for she's, it. Uh, yeah, and she's squealing. She's too. squealing. It's no, crazy. Not even a loud whisper. No, it's not even a loud um, whisper. Hardly. I, I did forget uh, one feel, hi- history feels. Um, they say in this movie that the inn has been open since 1832. Why did they say that year? Alonzo, do you happen to know? Uh, is that the publication of like a Christmas carol or, or it was the uh, publication a, a from Nicholas? of. Twas the night before Christmas. Yes, visit from St. Nicholas. The second one was correct. That from that time, twas the night before Christmas, they've opened the inn. That's next level. That's doing your research magic that right is, there, yes. which is impressive to me. Um, that's that's like in Christmas Chronicles 2 where they bring turkey into it. Like, yeah. okay, you've, you've clearly yeah. done some reading. I've not seen those, but I'll take your word for it. Uh, <laughs> every time they're on screen together in Santa Claus, Indiana, makes sense as to why they need to be together aside from why they're staying there in the first place. Like you are a $200 flight to New York away. You're, you're, you could drive it in a day. You are, you are not getting to Aspen. The West half of the country clearly is closed for some reason. 
but nothing is a matter in between Indiana and New York. They do say all the flights are canceled. They said to Aspen. They say to Aspen. They don't say back to New York. I, I think they say. No, because he says it's clearing up out there. He says to Santa, it's clearing up out there. And Santa says, oh, there's no more flights to Aspen. What, what were you going to say, Alonzo? Doesn't the boss reassign so, them and say stay yeah. once they're stuck? And then after that, even if the, the weather clears, they're yeah. still going to stick around. But that doesn't happen assignment? right away. There are hours. There is a day <laughs> where they could have been like, we're not staying in this podunk BFE any longer than we have to. We're out of here. And they don't. They're just like, what are we going to do? We're stuck in Indiana. <laughs> and it doesn't make any sense. But after that, I'm on board. <clears throat> Let's talk horror movies, shall we? Um, put, put on my clothes, said the 160-year-old person, innkeeper, <laughs> to the tenant twice. What? 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 They're, so they have pajamas. That's bad. But then they said, it's a fancy event. Don't worry. worry. The missus and I, Santa and Mrs. Claus, picked out outfits for you, and we had them tailored for you. What what is going on here? Did Mrs. Claus crawl into bed with Bethany Joy Lynn's <laughs> and measure her? Did that table. happen? Did we get is that scene on the cutting room floor? This is not okay. Also, before the Christmas Eve party, at night in the inn, no one is there. Ever. The nighttime scenes in the inn are Santa, Mrs. Claus, Andrew, and Joy. That's it. No one else is there until the Christmas Eve party. Daytime, it's full. Everybody's there eating breakfast. Nighttime, empty. I am very concerned. I wonder if like all those Santa people is Krampus. Oh, uh, yeah. I wonder if all those people that are there are just that, like there for like it's a restaurant maybe. Like so they all go to the eat, you know, want to go get uh, Carol's cooking. Yeah. But we don't stay there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe it's just a couple of rooms. Man, I just I, I don't know. Um Next up, does Bethany Joy Lenz's character have narcolepsy? Because she <laughs> is in the car having a very romantic conversation. They go to him. He literally says, do you want to come to my parents' house for Christmas? She's asleep. It is, there's some sort of medical condition there, and I feel like we need to get to the bottom of that. Um, next off, uh, Andrew has the old electronic football game. They call it electronic mm. quarterback. I don't know if they couldn't call it electronic football. It's called electronic football. Um you and even see the you see the Coleco. That's logo. right. You see the Coleco logo. Here's the thing that bothers me. Um, he has not beaten his top score <laughs> since <laughs> since he was 12, and he plays it all the time. He reached a ceiling of electronic quarterback at 12, even though he's been playing for 20 more years. He cannot beat the score he got when he was in sixth grade. Some people peak in grammar school, you know. <laughs> Some people peak in sixth grade. And the stick to of this guy to keep playing for 20 years after he just can't match what he did as a 12-year-old. I mean, maybe he just recently found it again and fell he back in he love with it. He plays it all the time. Plays all the time now. Recently found it. I don't know. Also, they portray, you know, Andrew Walker to be very unkempt and disheveled, and he's packing a bag by just balling up clothes and throwing. And I... I am fine with that because that's who I am. Having said that, you don't look, you don't wear the shirts Andrew Walker wears and <laughs> be that guy. You got two options. You wear the same shirt every day because it doesn't ever look wrinkled or you've got to make sure your clothes look good. You don't have this option where you ball everything up, chuck it in a bag and it all looks permanently pressed when you put it on. That's just not how life works. Unfortunately, those, even for those Andrew. Henleys, those Henleys are smooth. Those Henleys are smooth. That's exactly right. <laughs> um, Andrew Walker's initial idea for a piece in Santa Claus, Indiana. And I hope you're sitting down because he thinks this is going to reel in the clicks. And save his job. Is how to find the fastest sled for the holidays. <laughs> The people have a right to know. You know, I've been wondering how to speed my sled up. I do. I, you know, he did once Not he wrote it. Sled. Once he wrote it down, he knew it was a mistake. Like I don't know, put weights on it. Like it's just pretty straightforward. There's your one sentence article. Um, that was that was as bad as this movie gets. Um, anytime they're at his family's house, 
everyone has a seat that's comfortable except Andrew. And he does this thing where he leans on his elbow, like reclines and lays long ways in the middle of the floor on hardwood floor. And I'm just wondering, does any... Does anybody actually do that no. in real life? No, he's reclining like he's at Passover. It is absurd. <laughs> and it's hardwood floor. Yeah. There's no, He's not leaning against anything. He's doing it core could not exercises. be more uncomfortable. Everyone else is eating Christmas popcorn. My man's doing Pilates. The only reason they did it is because they wanted to have a, like a, a, a shot he's of him in front of the one, fire. He's even got one of the knees up yeah. in the air. Like who's comfortable? Like maybe like on a water bed? I don't know. Like you, you're just on a hardwood floor in the center of the room. It doesn't make any sense to me at all. I, I don't understand that. It doesn't it doesn't work. Gary, can I get up yet? No. no. We're doing another one. <laughs> Stay still. Get to um, your spot. That, that that reminds me. Sorry. Quick correction to Dan uh, to Brand's synopsis. Uh, it's not that he hasn't seen the family in years. It's that he hasn't been home for Christmas. Christmas. That's right. Three years. That's right. Years. He actually well, does see the family. Well, I I. I he's, thought I said he hasn't been home yeah. for he, years, which he, I did. Like, I felt like he said he hasn't been home. He has seen, no. he, he makes he it goes, clear he has seen the he family. He goes home, just not over the holidays. He, just not at Christmas. He does go home. Yeah. Okay. Um, so they should have a chair for him is that's what I'm right. saying. Yeah, they should at least have something that he could sit on, that, like a bed of nails. I don't know, like what, <laughs> so, something that's better than what he's doing. A, a ball, uh, you know, whatever. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah uh, can we talk about uh, the ex-boyfriend, the Baxter here? Um, oh, boy. I, I don't know what to, uh, to make heads or tails of this guy because his family has like butlers and maids and, and so much money, and he whisks her away from a Christmas Eve party to a Motel 6. <laughs> it, there are cobwebs amidst yellow painting in this one-window motel room. Like, that bed vibrates. Like, that, 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 is, <laughs> that, that room, how? What is he? T- like, that in there, you're all fancy, and you pitched, like, hey, I got us a room. We're going to go, and, and you get near there. Near the airport. Near the airport. Now, that should have been a giveaway. But this is <laughs> this is a room that, you know, working class Dan would not stay in. Like, I would be like, no, it's a no. You remember that room we stayed in before we got on the airport in Charlotte? I do. That was a, that was a tough sled, and I booked that one. But that one was great compared to this room. Yeah. That was awful. <laughs> um, and then also, he says his family um, uh, exchanges gift cards eats a meal, and then watches the news on Christmas Day. <laughs> Is he a robot? Did he? I, what happened there? We, we, we have found a worse Baxter family than the one in um, Very Merry Mix-Up. Oh, And I thought yeah. that was the worst family we were yeah. going to get. Oh, just, I, I don't know. He that that family is bad news. Uh, you're yeah, right. They actively Ooh. hate each other. Yeah, they don't like each other. This family may like each other. They just don't know what Christmas is, and they just watch the news instead. Oh, and they don't eat a meal. They eat Thai food oh, on goodness. Christmas Day. Come on, get out of here. Mm, That's all I got. It hurts my heart yeah. even hearing all that. Mm, hey, do you know where I would find the fastest sled for the holidays? <laughs> I don't want a fast one. I want the fastest. <laughs> I want to know like. <laughs> Check Epiphany. <laughs> what was he? Where Where do you go with Is that Epiphany information? Is like BuzzFeed but classier? Like what? It's a travel magazine, but I guess also with, uh, it, they also help you. Now, when you get to town, you're going to want the fastest sled. You don't want to be caught in a situation where you're losing sled races to townies. No, no. Like, how, what, what is this? What's happening right now? I mean, and the Feast of the Epiphany is the 12th day of Christmas. Yeah. I don't know if the movie thought that out or not, but it, that's a nice little shout out. Amen. Mm. Uh, it's time for What the Hallmark is part of the show. What the light time? What? Once in a lifetime. Once in a lifetime. There, that's not bad. Uh, where we talk about uh, where we wonder what could have been maybe happened, give some clarity to any questions that we still have. Alonzo? I'm wondering if the uh, Winterses reenact this drama every Christmas for other oh, yeah. unsuspecting reporter couples who show up. Oh, yeah. Because there, there's something about this that all seems very like they know exactly where this is going to go and they're manipulating all of these events to occur. And I'm just wondering if some other of other hapless pairs of journalists who need to get together find their way to Santa Claus, Indiana every Christmas or if this is just a one time. Well, but here's the problem. They really put themselves in a jam here because now it's been published that's right that the inn is oh, safe true you can't have any more uh, like yeah. no did more the inn, this is i wasn't going to make mine but did the inn really need saving yeah that's a great question i don't know yeah. if it did or not 
I don't know if this was just their gambit this year. Like they have right. twelve different. It's like uh, uh, the house in the cabin in the woods. It's like they got a board <laughs> full, and they just spin it. Like what are we doing this year? Oh, save the inn. Okay, let's save the inn. Let's do it. Like that would make sense to me. I like that. I think that's what we're dealing with. I think this is a I want to write that. Claus, yeah. Indiana. I want to I write that movie. I like that. A lot. I, I do have logistical questions about, you know, Santa's operation here. Like, it does seem like he has traded in the North Pole for Santa Claus, Indiana. That's right. He lives there. He has what appears to be one elf um, in a room full of clocks. And I just want to <laughs> know... Like where the toy? Like he's clearly Santa. North Pole. So still. North so he's Pole. still. Yeah. But he's it is got important. A little, uh, zoop underground to but, the North Pole. But well, here's why. Here's where it gets tricky, though. Is he takes off from Santa Claus, Indiana at midnight? Did we establish he took off there, or you, they just saw that in the distance? Did we establish he was taking off from Santa Claus, Indiana? I don't think we did. What? Well, it really depends on because I. She it was depends like, on she what you believe. It's the Aurora Borealis? No, no, it was, it was <laughs> clearly Santa. Yeah. But it also, it depends on also your your view of Santa yes. and how he delivers toys. So, you know, there's tradition that Santa delivers the toys at midnight to family. So he's somehow, Everywhere so is he, just, is he just in Santa Claus, Indiana at midnight because it's midnight and he's delivering? These are all things yeah, that yeah, are, yeah. He's, he Look, he's at that, he's at the, the Christmas Eve party pretty late <laughs> in the is. evening because it is already midnight in like Poland, you know, like the, <laughs> I, I, I think he needs oh, yeah. to get I, on with it. Yeah. I do love that he is Santa. And he is going to travel the world, but he does need clocks still. Oh, everywhere. <laughs> when With all the time to, zones. The time zones are tricky even for Santa, is right. I think what I'm getting when at he's here. In Indiana, just he wants one, to know what time it is Just everywhere. one yeah. time, and yeah. Santa wouldn't have this issue. Yeah. Still a bad idea, Brand. Stop Thanks. I'll, I'll, yeah, but Santa would ha like it. Yeah. That's uh, all that matters. I Mine is not Santa related, unfortunately. Mine is about this last article that was written. I love the idea that they combined articles, but I don't know how they combined articles. Like, like how it, did he get her? How did he get her article? It, it, like, so for me, is the new article really he wrote it and it's her research and that's why it's by both of them? Or did he find her article somewhere and just kind of finish it and kind of put the finishing touches on it? I, I just I'm very confused. It Maybe is he possible. Her Windows laptop. <laughs> oh no, those things are bulletproof. It man. is you possible. Can't. You know, they said they were gonna. You know, no. Yeah. They said they were gonna exchange about the party, but, but she didn't. says I didn't finish, and he didn't give her right. his because it's a declaration of love. Right. So yeah, I don't know. It just my it guess would be that she easy. He didn't use any of her actual writing. Just used just her the evidence. research. Yeah. But he found the deed. So really. Like her, she just binged a few things. Yes, she yes. <laughs> she has little to do with this, right. but you also don't get the girl that way. That's you know, right. you gotta, you gotta, there's, you gotta. There's, there's, there's no act of love like sharing a byline. That's right. That's right. <laughs> mm, yeah. You gotta, it's the long game. Man. Or it's like no game. act of hatred, like sharing a byline like fastest sled. Like you're going yeah. down with me on this thing. <laughs> I'm not taking all the heat for fastest sled. Can you it's imagine? By both of us. That's the we one. We both right. thought this was a good idea. <laughs> Oh, and I love you. <laughs> it was, it's just one word. Red, red ones. Also love you. Yeah. Ball weights. Aluminum ball weights. Love Spray you. With that, whatever that Clark Griswold stuff That's is, right. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I am interested now in what, you know, the fastest sled. Yeah, of course. But that's neither here nor there. Yeah. Uh, we did, everybody. Congratulations. Congratulations. Um, Alonzo, I will let you have some parting words here, some wisdom that you would like to share with the <laughs> listeners um, to get them through another week here on a Monday. Uh, you know, I, I, we, we are heading into May, and, uh, you know, that, of course, means for a lot of people the end of the school year, which I'm sure this has been the kind of school year that was all one giant question mark. Anyway, uh, I hope that everybody is allowing themselves a little time off, a little time yes. to just sort of take a breath and you know because we, we've all been through collectively a terrible year parents i know have had just a lot to deal with and uh you know as much as i want everybody to you know be smart about this and keep wearing masks in public places and don't rush to like crowded indoor things 
Like, cut yourself some slack. Give yourself a break. I love Be it. Nice wow. to you. You, you know what? It. You know what? And that segues perfectly. We should do that. I think we're going to do it. I think we're going to take a whole week off in May. I love it. What do you think? Like May 10th to 15th? I think May 10th to 15th, no deck to Hallmark. No deck to Hallmark. Just a week off. Week. The whole week off. And if no you don't like Hallmark. that idea, blame Alonzo. Let me, let me just say this. If you, by May 10th, are all cut up, caught up on every episode we've ever done... <laughs> You need the week off, too. Yeah, you do. You need it off, too. Don't <laughs> act like you don't need that week off, because you do. And we'll be back before you know it. That's right. And Just, there's so much other Bramble Jam programming for you to catch that's up right. with during that week. Yeah. You know, uh, 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 Yo Gavel Gavel, History Hallmark Hallmark Story, book Hallmark Club, Book Club, a film and a movie. Panda, who is not me, a film and a movie, that's certainly. Right. I mean, come so, on. So, yeah, there's the, yeah, we, we got you covered for that week. I it love so it. So true. So love true. It. Love it. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow with. Uh, it's that I movie with the cook, and and she no. doesn't want to ma- be with him. Yes, she wants to be with another guy. Uh, but right getting- in front of you, or yeah, in right in front of, of me. Yeah, that true. sounds right. Uh, until then, may we be the first to wish you a Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Deck the Hallmark is a Bramble Jam podcast recorded live and yeah, that Greenville, South Carolina is produced by Brandon Gray, set decor by Plum Haywood Mall. For more information on all Bramble Jam podcasts, you can go to BrambleJamPodcast.com for more information on how to listen to Deck the Hallmark ad-free. You can go to BrambleJamPlus.com.